Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Launched in 2016, this is the Vacheron Constantin Overseas World Time in Stainless Steel, a watch for which the rival Aquanaut, Nautilus, Royal Oak, and Offshore lines have absolutely no direct equivalent. It's a singular statement of Vacheron's ambition and uncompromising standards, a desire to make the Generation 3 Overseas not just as good, but better than its rivals from the other two great houses. Vacheron has done well. The Overseas draws its essential lines, not just from the original overseas of 1996, but from the 1972 Vacheron 222 sports watch designed once upon a time by Jörg Heisig. The timepiece on my wrist takes after that original while continuing the design traditions of the overseas line, and it adds sizable proportions. This is a Royal Oak Offshore killer. 43.5 millimeters in diameter. It's not particularly thick. 12.7 millimeters thick. It's as thick as a Rolex Submariner, so easy to cuff under a sleeve. The watch is broad, but not overly so from lug to lug at 50.9 millimeters. I find this watch wears easily on my wrist, and I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. It is a hefty and sizable thing with a lot of metal invested. There are also a lot of features hidden. Now, the timepiece is equipped with both a bracelet and two straps. You get the two straps, one leather, one rubber, plus a separate deployment clasp for them, and then you also get the bracelet when you buy the watch. As you can see, it's hand finished with a Maltese cross motif that's internally polished, externally set and finished. Has a lovely bevel that continues from the lug hood all the way down, perfectly aligned across the links. Every individual link is fixed by a screw, and you'll appreciate that every individual link is removable, so you will get the size down pat and perfect. There is also a quick release lug system that'll allows you to quickly and easily remove the bracelet if you just want to admire the movement or if you want to swap to one of the accessory straps for a different look. Jumping to the clasp, it's a twin trigger system and thus quite secure. And by the way, how much do you love screws being used to size links on a bracelet? Compared to Patek Philippe and its pin sleeves, this is not just state of the art and world class, but it puts Patek to shame with embarrassment. There is a hidden micro adjustment on both sides of this clasp. You have two micro adjustments. Each one is effectively the equivalent of a half link. As you see, there is a half link. And if you deploy them both, it's the equivalent of adding one full sizable link. So you have a great deal of tunability with this fully sizable and micro adjustable bracelet. This is an impressive watch with yet another Maltese cross motif externally. You could see the logo recapitulated in the repeating form of the center links. And then you could see it on the outer face of the bezel itself, as well as on the crown. And of course, we're going to default to the dial in just a moment, but let's talk about the case design. It's very much of a 70s persuasion, and this is the most visible legacy of the old 222. The tonneau style case, the satin finished hoods, and you can see that the case is designed to diminish a little bit from its midsection down to its case back, so it actually slopes inward from the junction of the bezel and the case hoods. You'll also appreciate one of the features that's distinctive of the Generation 3 Overseas, which is this plinth or platform that sits underneath the bezel proper. You'll also appreciate that there is some differential finish going on with the plinth satin finished and the recesses of the bezel polished, but the outer face is the Maltese cross element, all of high polish. The bezel is basically conical in cross section, and the crystal is mostly flat to keep the watch fairly thin. Now, zooming out, you can see that the the purpose of this watch is to give you a view of 35 time zones, I know, I counted, and it will actually give you the time in some of the incremental time zones between the 24 primaries. So you can see that there are cities with their names in black, those are cities that use summertime, and those in red do not. The watch features several sapphire discs that actually portray all this information. You have outboard a register, nice and sloped, a flange overhanging the center. That's for reading the seconds and the minutes. Then you have a 24-hour reference ring that moves in a counterclockwise direction. Those 24 hours featuring one half shaded for the night, one half light and silver for the day. So you know whether it's day or night, anywhere you may be. So you can see, for example, right now it's nighttime in Moscow. You read the city adjacent to the hour ring, and that gives you the time there. You read your minutes from the center. The center of the dial features raised and relieved satin finished continental land masses. So this is actually slightly raised above a satin finished dial base and it's exquisitely crafted. It's worth looping this dial for its details. Now as I make adjustments here, I'm going to show you first how you change the time. The watch does feature hacking seconds 
take that Patek. And as you make adjustments, the index is down at six o'clock. You place your reference city above the index. As I make these adjustments, I change the time in my reference city. So let's say I want to first change the time to nine o'clock in New York. So now I can see it's nine o'clock in New York, for example, whereas in London, it's 2 a.m. Now, let's say I want to change my reference city. Let's say I want to go from New York to London. I make these adjustments, and you can see the incremental time zones, some of them 30 minutes at variance from their cardinal time zone, some of them 15 minutes at variance, cause the minute hand to jump in a regular fashion as the intervals themselves are not even one hour slices of time. So this is a very smart world time watch. Now I've positioned London and I've made my last adjustment and that's exactly how you would change the time. Turning it all over, I'm going to use the quick release bracelet system to showcase what Vacheron hath wrought. Now traditionally the overseas would always use a customer caliber. Sometimes it would be Frédéric Piguet, sometimes it would be Gérard Perregaux, sometimes it would be Gégé Lecoult, but it was never a Vacheron movement. With the Generation 3 overseas, that changes. You also get, for the first time, a display case back, and you also get, for the first time, the Geneva Hallmark, not just on the movement, but also on the case itself, as it is now a full case, full watch standard. Engraved and triple finished 22 carat rotor, note, not 21, not 18 carat, not tungsten, 22 carat, with a loveless, com lovely comp compass rotor rose motif. So the compass rose motif, pardon my French, is born on a unidirectional winding system with ceramic rotor bearings. So that ensures that there's a very high efficiency to winding as unidirectional is more efficient than bidirectional and ceramic more efficient than lubricated steel. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It features five position adjustment like a chronometer, 27 joules, the stop second functionality, and you can see the mirrored chamfer or anglage lighting up on the edge of the bridges, every screw head black polished. There is a richly textured Cote de Genève across the individual bridges and then an engine turned perlage on the base plate in two different sizes. I should mention that the watch is 150 meters water resistant as well as 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic. So while the, it does not have the solid iron cage around the movement as previous overseas did, it has the same degree of anti-magnetism. Remember the ISO 764 is a 4,800 ampere per meter density resistance to be an anti-magnetic watch. This is 25,000 ampere per meter and 150 meters thanks to the screw down crown. You can see this, which is pretty close to the perfect complicated sports watch, and make it yours on the watch box. Vacheron Overseas World Time by Night.